Okay, so question two. Uh, I do like these questions. The one thing you got to remember is that when you do an implicit differentiation, um, whenever you differentiate a y, so if, since we've got four y squared here, when we differentiate that, that's going to go to, so the power's going to come down, so it's going to be eight y, then we're going to stick dy by dx on the end of it. And then here, we've got two things multiplied together. We've got three x and we've got y, so we're going to need to use differentiation by parts on that one. So we want to find dy by dx. So we're going to go along and differentiate oh, differentiate everything. So it's going to be 2x. And then we've got to do this one by parts. So if we say that u equals 3x and v equals y, du simply goes to 3 and dy, sorry, dv goes to um, dy by dx. So then u dv is going to be 3x dy by dx, and v du is going to be 3y. Now, we've got x squared, then we've differentiated this, but we're going to stick this in brackets. So 3x dy by dx plus 3y. Now, the reason that we stick it in brackets is because if we just wrote that out without the brackets, this sign here would be wrong, because uh, that's going to go to a minus. Then we differentiate the other bits and pieces, so that's going to be 8y, and then because we're differentiating y, we stick dy by dx on it, 6 4 just goes, that equals 0. So if we write out again, it's going to be 2x minus 3x dy by dx, oh, I almost made a mistake myself, minus 3y, minus 8y dy by dx equals 0. Now, what you then do, so that's the implicit differentiation stuff, but if you want to get what dy by dx is, we need to get every dy by dx on one side and leave everything else on the other side. So because both of the dy by dx's are negative, we're going to get them onto the right-hand side. So you've got 2x minus 3y. To get everything else onto the other side, you've got 3x dy by dx plus 8y dy by dx. You're then going to factorise out the dy by dx leaving you with dy by dx times by 3x plus 8y, 2x minus 3y, and then we've got dy by dx equals 2x minus 3y over 3x plus 8y. And that's the first part of the question done. So we differentiate, again, got to be really wary of differentiating with respect to y, make sure you stick a dy by dx on it. And if you've ever got anything that's either a product or a quotient, so 2x over, say, 4y or 5y, um, that you use a quotient rule. So you've got the u on top and you've got v underneath, so you use the quotient rule for that one. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the coordinates of the points on C where dy by dx equals 0. So we've just worked out what dy by dx is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to zero. Now, when you set a fraction equal to zero, it doesn't matter about the bottom thing. The only thing that you're looking at is the top. So we've got to set 2x minus 3y equal to zero. Because um, if you've got a fraction and you've got zero on the numerator, it doesn't matter what the denominator is, you're still going to get zero. So we're going to set the top equal to 0. So if we do that, 2x equals 3y. And then what we're going to do, because we've got one equation there and we've got two variables, so we need to use our original equation. Now that's where a lot of people sort of finish the question because they don't know what to do once they've set this equal to 0. You then substitute it back in to our original equation. So we've got x squared minus 3xy minus 4y squared plus 64 equals 0. And now what we're going to do is we're going to somehow either rearrange to get x equals y equals and substitute it in. Now because we've got a negative here and we've got four lots of y squared, let's get rid of the x squared instead. So if we rearrange to get x equals 3y over 2 and then substitute that in. So it's going to be 3y over 2. We're going to make sure that we do full workings so that we don't drop any marks, or that even if we do drop marks later, we've still got some working marks. Now, three lots of x, lots of y, so 
we say 3y times x, so 3y over 2, minus 4y squared plus 64 equals 0. So if we then expand the brackets, 3y over 2 squared is going to be 9y over 4, minus 9y over 2, so that's 9y squared, 9y squared, minus 4y squared plus 64. Now, what I'd then do is I'd probably make everything over 4, so I'd make that 18 over 4, make this one 16y squared over 4. So 9y squared take away 18y squared is going to be minus 9y squared take away 16 is going to be minus 25y squared over 4. So A equals 64. Uh, sorry, plus 64 equals 0. And then I'm going to move this over to the other side. So I've got 64 equals 25y squared over 4. So times through by 4, divide by 25, and in doing that, I get y squared equals 256 over 64, which then, if we square root it, y equals plus and minus the square root of 256 over 64, which equals 16 over 8, plus and minus. So what we do, these are our values of x. Now we said that, so these are our values of y, and we said earlier that x equals 3y over 2. So we're going to do 3 lots of 16, actually that's not right, is it? So 16 over 25, sorry my mistake. Bear with me. There you go. 3 lots of 16 over 5 which is going to equal 48 over 5. So we've got one coordinate as 48 over 5 is the x-coordinate, and that gives us 16 over 5. And we've also got three lots of minus 16 over 5. Oh, sorry, then we have to divide by 2. Sorry, yeah, divide by 2, so that's going to be 48 over 10. That's going to be minus 48 over 5. Then we divide by 2, so it's going to be minus 48 over 10. So we've got minus 48 over 10, minus 16 over 5. Then if we simplify those fractions down, 48 over 10 is going to be 24 over 5. So 24 over 5, 16 over 5. And minus 24 over 5, minus 16 over 5. And that's it for question two. Again, like, subscribe and share if this is the only video that you've watched. Thank you.